Hey, I'm Jimmy from Superpath. I'm here today with Alex Poulos, the VP of Marketing at Docsend. We have two different roles we're gonna be talking about today, two content roles. Um, we'll, we'll break those out and chat about each separately. Um, Alex, first I think we should talk about the Director of Content and Comms role, which you're hiring for, but maybe first you can just introduce yourself uh, and tell us a little bit about Docsend. Yeah, Jimmy, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, Docsend is a secure document sharing platform uh, that has a multitude of different use cases. Um, it can be used all the way from a founder sharing their pitch deck when they're actually uh, fundraising and, and they want to get some intel as to why VCs are looking at their pitch deck and how. Um, Docsend is being used in, in M&A transactions, in, in sourcing deals, managing deals, executing deals. Uh, it's used by sales team, you know, when they send out sales collateral or sales presentations or price quotes, um, you know, the, the, the number of different use cases is, is almost unlimited right now. Um, and, and that's why we're seeing, we're seeing a lot of growth and accelerating growth through 2020. Um, in terms of culture, uh, Doxen is, is a company with, uh, with a lot of humility coming all the way from, from the CEO and, and the founders. It's a low ego company. It's a company that invests a lot in, in its customers. Uh, we have a, a, what I think is a pretty amazing NPS of, of 48. Uh, which I think is, is is really good for a B2B SaaS company. And, you know, given all the different problems we're tackling for, for different personas and different use cases, it's it's never boring, right? It's it's always so much to do and 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 that percolates all the way from the founding team to marketing to sales and, and the product. That's awesome. Um, this role that you're hiring for right now, this director of content and comms, is is a big job. I mean it it sounds like you're looking for someone with 10 plus years experience going to run uh, uh, and a team that already there's a team already in place plus potentially the opportunity to grow that team over time. Correct. Could you just give us an overview of, um, of this role from your perspective and what stands out about it? Yeah. I mean, it, it is an important role. And, and if you don't mind, let, let me ask, let, let me start by, by explaining to you how marketing is organized and what yeah, 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 please. That, that directly like fits in there. Um, in marketing, we have three, what I call pillars of growth. And these are the three priorities. I don't believe in, in doing 50 things in marketing, you know, in a mediocre way, you know, better do five things and be the best out there than do 50 different things. So the three, you know, pillars that we're, we're investing and we want to grow and, and prioritize and we organize the marketing team around our content first and foremost, partners and partner strategy and product led growth, how to use product and customers to accelerate growth. So the whole marketing team, all, all 10 of us, is organized in those three, three pillars. Um, we have uh, four people in content, including this role. We have three people in partners. We have two uh, in growth and product marketing and a marketing ops person, right? Got it. Um, so the content team is the biggest team in, in the marketing organization. And by the way, Doxen is, is about 50 people, 55 people total. Okay. Um, so, so this role is, is, is probably the most senior role in the team um, and it will be leading all our content and, and communication strategy um, primarily around our, our own and, and, and our earned channels. Um, this role will work directly with me and the CEO, you know, we'll craft messaging. Um, as I mentioned, we have so many different personas, target markets. So, so it's very exciting to have messaging for, for all those different uh, target markets. Um, as you mentioned, this role has already three direct reports, uh, plus an SEO consultant that we use almost um, permanently, uh, plus a peer agency. We work very closely with a peer agency that helps us yeah, with yeah. placement, pitching, and so forth. So um, it, it has a lot of tentacles, this role. Um, and, and we're also a very close-knit marketing team, so this role will obviously uh, work. I mean, it goes without saying that it'll be working interfacing with everyone in, in the team. I think like it's a very good overview of kind of Docsend and where marketing sits within that. I mean, it's clear y'all are investing heavily in content, which I think is really cool. I feel like that, that in and of itself makes this role more attractive because this person is not going to be fighting for buy-in. Like Docsend has already, has already bought in. That makes it, I mean, just in my own experience, makes it a lot easier to get things done. Um, how about just sort of day-to-day -day work? I mean, do you have a sense of like exactly what this person will be doing? on any given day? Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, where we are right now uh, and where we spend our, our last 12 months in content is 
we focused a lot on, on startup fundraising and we built an amazing content playbook and, and we produced some, some pretty unique data-driven content around fundraising. And when I say unique, you know, we have data points as to what makes a great pitch deck for a founder, right? By, by um, founding, by uh, stage. Um, what happened during COVID? I mean, were VCs looking at decks or were they not looking at decks? And when did they recover? Um, highly controversial, but also very important, right? The funding divide. How does gender factor in, in fundraising biases? An all female founding team, you know, how much harder is the journey for them versus an all male founding team? And, and all that is based on data, right? So, so we have data and, and we, can, we can generate that content that's getting attention by obviously our, our target markets, the target community, but also media. So we have been building that for 12 months and I think the challenge and, and the excitement for this role is how can we start replicating that playbook how, how, and adapting it for different use cases, right? What, what works for sales teams, right? We have a lot of data as to how many stakeholders are involved in a sale, how many documents are being exchanged. You know, what are the most important documents to close a deal, right? So we have a, a, a variety of data that we can use and, and this role will come in and actually build all the different use cases and how you use content for those use cases. Got it. So day to day, I will say it, it, it's gonna be a lot about strategy and how do we expand to those use cases It'll be a lot around managing a team in place and, and growing the team, right? As we, uh, for example, we, as I mentioned, we nailed down the fundraising content. Uh, we, we, we're gonna have someone full-time just working with that particular use case and, and we're gonna be looking at other use cases. Um, and, and it's going to be a lot around managing this team and growing this team, as I mentioned. Um, you know, and, and obviously, you know, measuring and, and reporting on, on the effectiveness of content, how is content working out for us, you know, are we getting the awareness? Are we getting, you know, visits from, from, you know, not, not any visits, but visits from a target segments, how are those converting and so forth? Got it. Okay, cool. That's, that's really interesting. I really appreciate the focus on data and the fact that you have kind of formalized the, uh, the importance of using it in the marketing. I think it's very cool. Um, curious about, uh, the perfect candidate. You know, are there certain things you're going to be looking for in their skills or experience, whether it's mm -hmm. writing chops, strategy, people management, or, or other things? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say for this position, what, what stands out for me, right, as, as hiring manager, you know, first of all, like, you know, having built or, or having managed a, a strong team, right? Um, Docs and marketing team is a team of high performers. So these are going to be people that are experienced, they're ambitious, they want to move fast. So we're looking for someone who has that experience. In other words, we're not looking for someone who's going to be a first time manager of, of those people. Um, the second thing that, that is interesting to me or will be interesting to me in the process is, have you had success? Have you built some content plays, not inherited them from someone for someone else and just continuing building on a blog, but have you come up with some new, unique content plays, either point of view or approaches or distributions, right? How do you come up with the idea? How do you implement it? You know, how do you make it work? Because I'm fairly certain the first time nothing works, right? How do you make them work and how do you measure success, right? Do you have something like that that you can talk about? And, and, and the third one, and, and this, is, this is a big culture of the marketing team at Doxen is are you open to taking some wild bets? Every quarter we have one or two wild bets that we take as, as a team, and a lot of them come from content, right? Um, there's no primary reason why we're doing those. They're just, you know, pretty crazy. You know, they're just like, you know, make it or break it. But some great things have come out of those wild bets. So, you know, we're looking for someone who's not afraid to do that, not afraid to step outside the, the, the usual playbook uh, and, and come up with something uh, unique and new. That's cool. I love that. How closely will you work with this person? I would work very, very closely. I mean, he's going to be probably the most senior member on the team, as I mentioned. So, um, you know, a, a lot around messaging, you know, content is a, is a main uh, contributor to our, to our growth, um, our demand, our customers, uh, not only acquiring the customers, but also providing value throughout their, their, their lifetime from us. Um, in fact, we just got an email yesterday from a founder who, who, uh, to 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 our, to 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 Russ, our CEO, uh, and this founder helped Russ not only for building a product, 
but for, for all the content and, and value we provided for them throughout their, their journey of, of raising their, their round, right? And it was a lot around content, just, you know, the reports we put out, you know, how to build your deck, what works in your deck, what doesn't. So he, he thanked the CEO for not only for the product, but for, for, for this whole experience, right? Um, the majority of it was, was through content and, and this type of content. So, um, and as I mentioned, you know, content is one of the three uh, strategic growth pillars for us. So I'll be working very closely with that person. Got and it. so will Russ as well, right? Russ, Russ being the CEO. Yes. Uh, right. Who, for folks watching this, I'm going to talk to you in a few minutes about the company and culture and that kind of thing. If you want me to close a little bit talking about marketing and how marketing fits, uh, right before Russ joins, um, Doxen is a 100% inbound shop. So marketing is responsible. It has a true leadership seat on, on the table. Uh, we are responsible for bringing demand, bringing growth. Uh, and frankly, myself, I, I wouldn't want it any other way, right? Um, Doxen is an horizontal product, as I, as I mentioned. We market it vertically. Um, so, you know, um, the, the, definitely the director of content role will, you know, will need to be able to think outside a single segment. Um, and be able to deal with multiple audiences and, and multiple target markets. Got it. Yeah, um, that's interesting. Yeah, but also that, that, that shows the, the growth potential that the company has, right? Um, we're so successful. We were so successful in the last 12 months just by looking at one vertical. Um, there's at least half a dozen verticals to, to a dozen verticals right now that are popping up that, that we need to start addressing and, um, and accelerating. Got it. That's really cool. It just sounds like an awesome opportunity to work for, you know, a startup that is established, but you know, as an IPO yet, you're right. Like you sort of get to experience and participate in that growth, which is, you know, for, for the individuals thinking about this role, it's a really cool opportunity to hit your hit your wagon to a company that's moving in the right direction. Okay, you, you teased me to say that, but you know, <laughs> one of the three months in Q3 have been have been a record month, one after the other, right? So so that shows how how acceleration happens, even in the face of COVID. That frankly hasn't been a, a, an effect on us at, at all. Um, every month is a better month for us, and, and that's a great sign. That's 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 where we want to be and continue that. Got it. One other question I did want to ask you is about location. Um, where are you located? Is does this role will this person eventually be in an office, or are you okay with someone uh, remote? Uh, we, we are okay. Someone being remote, right? Uh, of course, it depends on on, on that person and, and how they can work remotely. Um, the preference for the director role will be to be in the office, but that's not a, a showstopper. Uh, we do have an office in downtown San Francisco. Obviously, it's closed. We, we all work from home. Uh, at some point, when it's safe, we'll, we'll reopen along with everyone else. So if someone wants to work in an office in San Francisco, that's, that's definitely um, an opportunity there when, when it's safe to do so. Got it. And so for folks interested, there'll be buttons below and to the side of, of this listing where you can express interest. And then I'll, I'll be helping make intros to Docsend as we identify good candidates. If you have any questions, email me. Um, we'll make sure those questions get answered. Alex, really appreciate it. Um, we're going to talk to Russ in a minute here about company culture and um, more things about Doxin kind of more broadly, but really appreciate you doing this and, and just sort of painting the picture of what these roles are like. Totally. Path here with Russ, CEO of Doxin. Um, Russ, really appreciate you doing this. I want to rate whatever the opposite of a red flag is. I want to wave that a green flag, maybe, <laughs> you know, just the fact that, that you're invested enough in, in these roles and in the content program at Docsend to be willing to participate in this. Uh, you volunteered, I didn't even ask you, um, which I think is just so cool. So I really appreciate you being here to chat about these roles. Of course. Um, could you just give us kind of overview of Docsend? Who, who is Docsend? What is Docsend? Kind of where is the company right now in its life cycle? Yeah, sure. So um, yeah. Uh, Russ Heddleston, uh, one of the co-founders of Doxen and the CEO. I've got two other co-founders, Dave and Tony. We've known each other since we went to undergrad at Stanford in, sorry, in 2003. And we've also worked together before. So this company is really kind of getting the band back together. Um, we started Doxen in 2013. Uh, fast forward to today, we've got over 15,000 customers. It's all B2B. It's 100% inbound. There's no acquisition cost to our customers and we're cash flow positive, and we've only raised $15 million. Um, so very much a marketing and product-led growth company, uh, and the content program is just central to our success. So that's why this is just such a, a critical piece for us. But um, yeah, we're, we're a very interesting company in the sense that like, we kind of fly under the radar, but we're just silently very successful. <laughs> uh, 
and will continue to, to be to be that way kind of going into the future. That's really cool. I think it's cool. It's a, I mean, you know, some of the startups you see out there that are uh, hiring aggressively, maybe have just raised, you know, tons and tons of money. They're not making any. Um, the, the future is unclear. I think it's, you know, I would recommend anyone to uh, consider hitching your wagon to a company that is, you know, not only, not only sustainable, has been around for a while, and is also just on a very clear growth trajectory that is going to benefit the individuals who will participate uh, as employees in that company also. Totally. And it's important to be at a company that's not completely overrun by investors. So companies that have raised a ton of capital, your equity might not end up being worth something. So in like Doxon's case, like the, our employee equity will absolutely be worth something um, just because of how capital efficient uh, we've, we've been as, as a company. That's awesome. What, what is the culture of Doxen like? Like, you know, what, what's the vibe uh, within the company? Yeah, it's a really fun culture. When I, whenever I get this question, it's like hard for me to answer because I just think back all, to all the companies I've worked at. I almost describe a great company culture as just the absence of bad things. So as mm -hmm. a company, we've tried to be like really diligent about like getting the right people into the company. And whenever someone is not a fit, like, like doing the hard thing and, and kind of getting them out, we say there's a great spot for someone everywhere, but just might not be here in some cases. And so that because we've been so diligent in, um, you know, hiring and managing our team well, it, people just like each other. They respect their coworkers. It's very much in a, a best idea wins type of company. It's very flat. It's all these things that every company says they are, but in our case, like I, I do really believe that to be true. And, you know, the company is only 52 people, so it's, it's relatively small. And one of the things we, we tell everyone at Docsend is that there are a lot of ways to measure success. It's not just how much money you raise and how many people you are. It's having a great product, having a great company. Um, and, you know, that doesn't necessarily require uh, a ton of people. But it also makes it a fun place to work because it's not in hyper growth mode, um, but it's a small, tight knit group of people, uh, very welcoming. We have really fun activities and events that we do. We have some remote employees, like 20%. Um, everyone else is in San Francisco where we have like a beautiful office in uh, the financial district. Um, like in the winter, we all go skiing together in Tahoe. Not, not next year, you know, but it, historically. And then in the summer, we'll do a river rafting trip where everyone comes out. We go down the, the Russian River and we fly people in who are remote um, to, for those activities. Uh, and we have like game nights um, kind of monthly. We do happy hours. Um, I can generally say it is like a really fun, fun place to be. That's awesome. That's so cool. Um, you know, when I was talking to Alex before, he mentioned that, that you personally are, are invested in content. And so I'm curious, you know, what is your involvement in marketing and with content? Like, will the, will the folks who fill these, the director role and the content manager role end up working directly with you at all? Oh, they definitely will. Yeah. Um, and that's also why I'm so invested in making this, you know, a great hire. Um, so, I mean, Part of my role as the CEO is just to be the face of the company. Um, so whenever we're talking to reporters, like I'm always in those calls, um, and you know, whenever we're you know working on content, like you know, I'm happy to provide input or advice, like making introductions to people who can be quotes or can be helpful. Um, so there's a whole variety of ways that I'm involved with the content team. Content is one of those strategies that's just worked incredibly well for us too as a business. Uh, and, and therefore it's really the best use of my time. So to like, make sure that that continues to be effective for us. That's awesome. I, I will tease an article that I wrote for the animals blog years ago about content marketing culture, which, um, I believe is genuinely a thing and so often comes from the top down. Mm -hmm. And so when, the, when the leadership of a company is invested and, and bought in and you don't have to sell every single idea, it makes one, it's just a nicer environment to do work, do your craft in. Um, mm -hmm. And it allows you to be more successful because the, the, the runway for the longer term plans is already built in. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to convince everyone that uh, SEO takes a while or great <laughs> writing requires lots of editing, which slows it down. Like just some of those little things that content marketers know to be true. Um, when you can be in a, an environment where all of that is embraced, it makes everything a little better. Yeah, totally. Like we're definitely long-term thinkers with this stuff. Like we published our first like research report on fundraising in 2015. That thing is still alive and getting lots of visits today. And this year we've been doing a bunch more research reports on like pre-seed and seed and series A fundraising. But 
one of the things we do is we use the data in our system as an unfair advantage to be better at storytelling which is just not something mm. that every company has access to data like that, or even like the mindset to, to run that playbook, because it does take a while. Um, but it ends up being that content layer cake that just stacks over time. For Doxin, we also talk about our technology being a horizontal product, but we have to market it vertically. And so, you know, people think of us as like a fundraising widget, but they don't realize that like, people use it for fundraising, for investor relations, for M&A, as a data room, for like sales teams, for customer success teams. It's all these different use cases for Doxin. And, each of them actually requires its own content strategy to get out there and get our get our voice heard. Um, and we primarily focused on fundraising because we're just really good at that one. But especially for the director role, like there there are a lot of, there's a lot of green space out there that we're will be really fun to figure out like what is the right content strategy to target like users in other verticals where we already have a significant user base. We just want to like accelerate the growth of that. Right, right. In a previous role, I worked in sales and we used Doxin. So I can speak to the product. It, it is actually good. And it's nice to work at a place too, where you can be proud of, of, the, of the product that you're working on. Oh, totally. Um, awesome. Ross, I really appreciate it. Anything else about Doc Center, these roles that, that folks should know about? Um, I think that these are just going to be really fun roles, honestly, just because one of the, the support that the people in these roles will get from the company and from me, uh, but also just the amount of creativity that's there um and and the amount of budget that we have to spend on it knowing how strategic it is to the company so i mean if, I'm, if i was a rock star content person this feels like a really great opportunity to kind of get in and like build out a larger team um and and feel really good about that and feel well respected in the company so i'm really looking forward to to getting some more people in the door and having having them to work with that's awesome so for folks interested, there'll be buttons below and to the side of this post where you can express interest and I'll be making intros to Docsend as we, as we find good candidates. Um, Russ, really appreciate it. Uh, we'll have some good folks coming your way soon. Awesome. Thanks, Jimmy. Yeah, take care.